need to get that set up. My Arya, my beautiful wife. adjust the camera probably that might not be terrible decent you think I don't know. it's on an angle Perfect. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk off for a second. You talk. Are we live? We are live. I, this is I'm seeing it live. Yes, but are we live on the internet? Yes, people can come see us. This is this is. Oh, well, in that case, <laughs> hey, what is up, guys? This is Couch Potato Mike here. On the survival punk youtube channel this is my beer and we are going to be talking to you guys today about how to budget out your survival and without further ado here is the man himself the survival punk james all right so uh, we got anybody watching yet um no i'm the only one in the chat currently which I mean, we just started doing this chat, I, so I don't even have um, a thousand subscribers. We'll talk about that in a second. But I mean, you the live is the biggest growth right now, so we're gonna keep pushing it. Like, so so basically, there's every benefit to do live, and I'm looking at some services that let me do live to like every platform at once uh, instead of just doing YouTube live. So I'm looking at that. But there's no reason to not record the podcast via live as opposed to just record it. So what I did before was I recorded the podcast, no video, and then I upload it to YouTube. One, it's a pain in the ass because I need to then add it to a still picture and edit it up to the right format, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's a lot easier um, considering, like, I think my mic is broke right now. So we're just using the I am not audio. broken at all. My mic is broken. Um, but with that, let's, um, let's go ahead. We'll, we'll start the podcast portion of it. Um, at any point, if you jump in and you have questions, ask it in the chat. I can see it. So dude, do you want to go ahead and do a podcast opening? I will intro? in a second. Okay. Uh, so in the live chat, you will see that the James Burnett is commenting. No, James Burnett is not a scammer. That's another YouTube account I have to sort of look at the, the video feed outside of my phone I'm recording on. Right. So, um, with that, <clears throat> hey, this is James Punk.com. And this is Couch Potato Mike. How are you doing today, sir? Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, 
I've been on a quest for years now to find something. Some of you may know that I have I quit drinking alcohol like eight years ago. Uh, since then, I've really missed Guinness. How amazing is it? You were that far on the wagon, dude. Yeah. Success, one of the successful alcohol uh, recovering alcoholic right. stories out there. I do. I do imbibe in non-alcoholic beers, which some this of you may video think is, is not brought to you by the Guinness Corporation. Right. Uh, but Mike found but Guinness we... Zero, and uh, man, it's fucking delicious. <sighs> they have balls in them. Yes, nitrogenators. They have, they have, yeah, I opened because uh, I bought a can of uh, regular Guinness Drought, a little four pack of them, <clears throat> and I opened it up because I heard something rattling around in there. Yeah, White balls, little little balls filled with nitrogen. That's what gives it the distinct. Uh, what's what one of the things gives it the distinct Guinness flavor? Um, oh, that's so good. So, there's that. Um, so, first of all, how have you been this week, Mike? I have been pretty good. Yeah, pretty good actually. I know the I know the audience will be happy to have you back. Um, phone and scheduling issues kind of hurt us from doing it last week, but so we th we think that the the new default time will be like Sundays around one o'clock. Um, because I think. So talking to Serenity, I think that so my daughter usually takes a nap around one o'clock ish. Um, you people should be out of church and back home, so you could be able to get on live stream. Last week I did it like seven in the morning, which is another good time because my daughter is asleep at seven in the morning, generally like ninety percent of the time. But so are you guys. So So um, is this the so is this guy. Right, right. So I'm thinking one o'clock in the afternoon should be pretty good. Um, we're doing it outside. Although usually on Sundays we do wake up early to go play disc golf, which we, we didn't do today. Right, we did not do it today. Um, so you know what, first of all, I wanna talk about, and I can't even see my notes, but I, I remember the notes. So we'll just kind of free ball. Well, I'm glad one of us does because I didn't even know what the topic of this was gonna be until a half hour ago. Right, right. So, and I wrote down, Karen's gonna Karen. Which I mean, if you're on the internet, that makes perfect sense to you. If you if you're not like if you're 80 years old and somehow you're listening to this podcast, you're like, Karen's going to Karen. You have no idea. Um, so I've decided this year, Mike, uh -huh. I'm gonna go hunting. Uh, um, the the meat shortages, the 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 problems going on with the supply industry. Um, I'm gonna go take a deer this year, maybe two. Uh, I think what, like out dancing? Yeah, dancing yes. restaurants. Um, like I'm going to go hunting this year, and I want to get some deer. Uh, and so I talked to my wife about this, Serenity, and I was like, so I'm going to go hunting this year, and she's on board. Like, I'm not having to like, drag her along. Like, she's a great, she's a great wife. Oh, she's going to go hunting with you? She actually, um, actually, she sounded, she was interested. She wanted to go hunting with me, so. Um, You're going to go kill Bambi? Yeah, she, she was on board um, with eating it, but. She kind of has like some some hangups, like so. No, I made, no, no. We're gonna go kill Bambi's mother. Not about the killing, about the eating. So, we I, I made duck one time, and granted, I didn't cook duck great. Like it wasn't like Gordon Ramsay would have like yelled at me in a restaurant. Like Gordon. Did Ramsay you get it a happy. beautiful medium rare? Uh, may you know it, maybe the skin was not crispy like it should have oh. been. It wasn't rendered perfectly. It uh, cooks was ninety percent of the time on its skin. But I, I would say like most of it was was pretty good and edible, right? But some of it was not so great. Like the skin wasn't super great, like it should have been, and the skin should have been fucking delicious. Yes, but there's it, a difference between edible and fantastic. Right, right. So, um, she the the meat that I gave her was perfectly well cooked and seasoned. <clears throat> and to be honest, it tasted a lot like steak. So it wasn't a taste issue or a health and safety issue. It was a mental thing, like just the whole eating of duck was just not not like she didn't feel bad about it, but it was just foreign. See, and here's the weird thing about duck, and this is what fucks a lot of people up, I find. Duck is a bird, and we have been taught that other birds that we eat, vis-a-vis -vis chicken, turkey, have to be cooked very thoroughly. We're used to eating that. People eat a lot of turkey, people eat a lot of chicken. Most people like us don't eat a lot of duck unless we go shoot it ourselves. And duck is red meat. Right, yeah, no, it's it, it, because it's not poultry, it's fowl. Fowl is different. Yes. Some birds are red meat, like ostrich is red meat. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's just a pure mental issue. She's just like, she doesn't know if mentally she could. So We're gonna my, eat Donald! 
my well and with with deer so my thought was you know what i'll go get some deer now and i'll cook it like perfectly i'll i'll like gordon ramsay the fuck out of that like deer steak but it was like five thousand dollars an ounce to, to make it no worse um no worse, worse. <laughs> so you i did my research you cannot legally go buy deer easily in like in like almost every state really because the usda doesn't inspect the deer you don't farm deer there's no deer farms. i've always wondered why there are no deer farms why has nobody ever i there, mean is it just because the yield of meat from uh, what you have to put into it is just so low i have no idea I, I, there there possibly are but they're just not big like because when i looked on the internet there, you could buy deer meat on the internet. It was you fairly, can buy anything on the it internet. It was fairly high priced. Everything's um, legal in New Jersey, but you, you really can't buy it in a store because you can't USDA regulate it because you shot it in a field. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'll go to a I'll go to a local Facebook group. Um, if you if you are familiar with the area, I went to one called Hip Dixon, which is our nearest big city, uh, and it's a fairly big Facebook group. And I, and I asked, I was like, hey, you know, so my, I'm trying to get my wife on board for hunting this year. I want to give her some deer so she can try it and see what she thinks. Man, the Karens came out. You can't buy deer. It's illegal. Yeah, okay. Uh, someone else was like, you've probably been reported already. What? What? Like, you can't report someone for thinking about doing something. Fuck. There's no thought crime. Okay, I'm going to say this, and here's the thing about me. Okay, I have my own YouTube channel, youtube.com slash couchpotatomike, where you can go and listen to me read all, read books on camera and unbox fun co-pops along with any other random thing that pops into my head. So I have an audience that I need to think about. But I will say this right now, and I don't care. Fuck you, Karen. Fuck all of you Karens. Mind your own goddamn business. Yeah. Um, as you were saying just ridiculous like so I, one of my first responses was like <laughs> well i didn't really plan on involving the government between like cash or like hey i i got this six pack of your favorite beer would you like it oh would i like some of your deer meat yes thank you um there's no need there's no need to bring in uh the fda in this this is a, this is a deal between friends I'm not a member of Hip Dixon. I used to be a member of Hip Dixon, but I left because of all the fucking Karens and Snowflakes. Yeah. Both of which I hate, by the way. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Yeah. So I, I just deleted that post. Um, and I, told, I was telling a guy at work, and he's going to bring me some deer backstrap. So awesome. Um, backstrap. I've, I've, from what I hear, that's the absolute best part of a deer. Um, which, so if you look on a cow, it's basically one of the tenderloins. I didn't realize that. The tenderloins are along the back on either side of the spine and on the other the underside of the spine basically like you have like the spine cord and then like top and bottom loins that's that's what that's a tenderloin um you know speaking of meat how much is it going to cost to get a good deep freeze that'll be big enough to hold us half a cow and probably like 200 bucks that's not that's not, that's not bad no uh two three hundred bucks we should be able to get a deep freezer and then uh so I'm still Because the more I think about that half a cow, the more I'm like, ooh, some nice, good inch thick steaks. Um, yeah. I'm, cra I'm craving meat right now. I've been on a low calorie diet for a while. I've lost about 70 pounds. You can congratulate me in the comments down below. He's lost even more than I have. 91. But now you've switched diets. I've switched to, to keto. Problem again. with any diet is you'll eventually plateau on it, and then you have to kind of throw your body into shock, change things up a little bit. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to talk Mike into doing carnivore. I'm not doing carnivore, but I can see the I can see the points of it. Uh, and I've been craving meat like crazy. Well, there you right. go, dude. Um, so yeah, Karens are going to Karen. Man, we've went long. We haven't even got into the topic today. Yes. Yet. So um, I got I got um, two more things to, to cover real quick in the. In well, the how house long clean. have we gone? I don't know. It hasn't been that long. Probably like. 10 minutes or so it doesn't matter the length we're in a good conversation here right so topextracts.com get all your creative needs from there uh, they reached out to me um so and my wife pointed this out recently in the state of tennessee and maybe other states state of tennessee to travel and legally buy kratom or so if you 
traveling in state Tennessee and you're caught with Kratom, it must be labeled pure leaf Kratom and have like, it, it must be stated that. And so top extracts does that. They come with like lab tested certification. So, you know, you're getting the pure Kratom, high quality, good stuff. Um, check them out. Top extracts.com. And while we're in the dot com area, hold on, hold on. Are you, are you, wait, no, I don't, go ahead. And if Kratom's not your thing, maybe CBD and Delta-8 is. And if CBD and Delta-8 is, uh, then go to moonwalker.com, uh, where they have a wide selection of different CBD oils, and my favorite, the gummies and edibles. Uh, they are great for mood relaxation, they're good for great mood stabilization, all of that, all of that good stuff. And guess what? If you put in the code CPMIKE, on checkout, you get a 10% discount. That's CP Mike at moonwalker.com. One more bit of housekeeping before we get into the show topic. And the show topic today is budgeting for survival. Budgeting for survival. Budgets for survival. Um, me and Mike are having a gentleman league contest. Um, there'll be graphics and links in the show notes. Um, but if you're on YouTube, you probably see this. Hey, there's. Hey, MW. Hey, MW. Yeah, we're doing a live. Uh, we got one person in here. Sweet. Um, so MW, what is up? You're gonna watch me get drunk. We're doing a contest, uh, the road to 1K, which sounds like pathetic, but I'm hyping it up. Like it's just fun. It's just pure fun. Yep. Um, 1,000 is the limit to get monetized, and well, they unlock other parts of YouTube if you're a creator and you get to 1,000. So. And we're both this close to 500. I'm a right. couple of subs ahead of them at this at the time that uh, of this recording. Right. So it's just a, it's a friendly like wager like I have a graphic it's like the road to 1K. Um, we're, we're pushing it out. Um, so my point, Mike at first was like, well, you have a bigger audience. You've been around longer. Like Survival Punk is like, I don't know, Holy 10 years hell. old or something. Um, Alcohol abuse. But I haven't actively really done anything on YouTube in like four years. So I may have an audience, but my YouTube audience is mostly gone. Um, My YouTube audience is mostly people that like to listen to me read dirty books. Right, and Mike has been very active, putting up multiple videos every week. has has got well over like hundreds of videos. Um, Since I started doing this, I jumped from like a hundred to four hundred really, really. Right. Well, not really, really quick. Not overnight. It took right. me a while, but. I've been growing my audience. So, and and my wife at first was like, "Well, Mike's put like a lot of heart and soul and hard work into this," and like. If you come in after not doing anything for four years and demolish him, he'll be sad. No. Like, uh, well, obviously, if I did, if I was a jackass and got to a thousand overnight, like, Mike probably would be like, you're just a dickhole. No, no. So I want to. No, you just I come out and find your door glued shut. I want us both to get to 1,000. I just want to get there, like, right before. Hi, name Aria. Daddy, too. Daddy, too. My daughter's coming by. Oh, we're about to have a special guest star. Hi. hi Come on. Hashtag Dat Wiggler. We talking to people on the internet like hi, Blippi. Hi. Come on. You want to come say hi to Blippi? <laughs> so the tenderloin is the cut inside the body. The back straps are on the outside. The back straps are the filet mignon. Yes, and I super want that in my tummy, dude. Great to see you guys back and being yourselves. Been missing the podcast, and we have been missing the podcast yes. too. Come on. Sometime Come life on. just gets in the way. Uh, on, since Mario. the last time we were doing the podcast on the regular, especially him, he has made a this. Old. Look at him. He made one of these. Uh -huh. She is adorable. She is my goddaughter, and she's my favorite goddaughter. You on the internet now? Say yeah. hi to the people. Say hello. Say hello. Wave. Say hi. <laughs> you just starstruck. Go back to mommy. You're Saki. I got you, Saki. I love you. Did you say bye? Love you, Aria. <laughs> so yes, and she's off. The road to 1,000. Um, I want us both to get there. I just want to get there like. One before. I want to hit 1,000 when Mike hits 999. Because I'm competitive. But and I, I, I need your to help to make sure that doesn't happen. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe to Starbucks.com and subscribe to CatchPotatoMike.com as well. 
YouTube.com slash Couch Potato Mike. Right. Uh, links will be in the in the show notes. Not in this video. When I publish it, it will be. Um, so, budgets for survival. Um, you, if you've been a longtime listener of the podcast or a reader of the blog, which there's hundreds of podcasts and videos, even though I took a um, sabbatical there for a while, you will notice that subject hasn't been hasn't been tickled upon yet. We haven't got on like budgets at all and, and budgets are a very prevalent thing in the oh current climate i mean we are in the middle of a price explosion i mean it got to the point where i'm spending 200 dollars a paycheck on gas right. i mean the sticker shock at the grocery store is enough to make you gouge your own fucking eyes out so you don't have to see it anymore right i mean uh, it's crazy the cost of living has just gone up so budgeting has never been more prevalent right so the first topic was was why you should budget um it's going to be a rough so i've been telling people it's going to be a rough year uh you could probably expand that out uh, it's not going to be like 2008 it's going to be like the 70s it's going to be probably probably going to be a rough decade guys like it's going to be a long rough time is this so if you look on youtube you'll see a lot of fucking doomsayers right now Every fucking video is nuclear apocalypse this, nuclear apocalypse that. And I might want to remind you guys that they've been doing that forever. Oh, there's there's one guy, and, and I don't want to be a dick. It's just the one guy. He's been doing it since the 40s. Like, there's a YouTuber that, um, so I lost connection on this, but that's still recording. Um, I know it is. It was last time. Okay. Um. Are we sure? Yeah. All right. Yeah, this one, it's... Yeah, different. Um, he's putting out every single video is doomsaying. Every video. And come on, like, has this guy ever been right? Like, and I even like him. But I think, like, he has a store. He's making money. Um, yeah. He's just doomsaying. And, you know, I from him, yeah, okay. But even from, like, the, the non-tinfoil hattery, you see a lot of people saying, so it's it's not the shit hit the fan. It's not the end time, guys. But it is going to be a rough, it's going to be a rough while. It's been rough since 2020, all right? I mean, we hit our first, in our generation, the world's first global pandemic of the 21st century. Yes. I mean, we have seen some shit already. Yes. Comment if you want me to make those shirts. I've survived. Check mark this apocalypse. And I just want to point out the human survival spirit and our fucking determination to make things as normal as possible. It is less than t it is a little over two years since this pandemic started. And honestly, unless if you didn't hear the people constantly reminding you of the pandemic to look around, you wouldn't think anything was happening anymore. No, it, it's the C CDC is pushing bullshit like constantly, like another wave of covid but most people we just don't give a shit we're anymore. over it we're over it we don't care about the monkey pox um monkey pox yes yeah, they're pushing this bullshit called monkey pox no i don't one, watch the news it's only about the gays um <laughs> 2025 yeah i you know uh 2025 on a low ball estimate yeah well the gays um, need to stop fucking the monkeys if so that's what's giving them the pox plan accordingly absolutely um it, it is gonna be a rough time and Having a budget, knowing what you spend, and trying to, to spend a little extra, God. get a little extra out of you, is I'm definitely what you need to do. trouble with this one. Do you have a saber? Oh, I don't have my keys. They must I be in the room still. I got it. Um, so, why you should budget? So, it it controlling your incoming money might be a little bit hard. Like, um, the raises across the board have happened. Like, most people recently have gotten a raise. Um, before the inflation hit, you probably ain't gonna get another one. No, not for a while. No. Um, I, so, I mean, if. Like, I, I never talk about where I work, but God bless my boss. He gave me a raise and then started giving people monthly, a monthly, bo all of our full timers got a monthly bonus, and it's just to try to help ends meet. Yeah. Because um, he is a really good guy. Owner of a mom and pop place. I'm not saying where I work. I never have. You guys don't even know my last name. Yeah. Um, so, th you're probably not going to get 
you're probably not going to get a raise. You're not going to get it, like you. There's side hustles. Um, so if oh you, yeah, that, like and I might wrap the show up. You got a car? Talking about that Uber. There's there's Lyft. a lot of money to be made. Like if you think about it, like the richest people in America made their wealth during the Great Depression. Oh yeah, the Rockefellers made their money during the Great Depression. Oh, um, Ray, uh, the McDonald's brothers started McDonald's during that time, and Ray Kroc blew that out of the water. Right. So there, there's opportunities people gotta eat to and be people made. People want inter entertainment, uh, but you got to be smart and you got to work for it. Yep. And it's not going to be. Man, we've had easy money, and now we have easy money, but the inflation is killing it. So, um, and I'm a little like. I'm a little just like just flabbergasted at like what pe what places are paying now like um, Walmart increased their wages like shit tons McDonald's McDonald's is like you expect to make like below minimum wage working McDonald's McDonald's is, is paying like start bonuses and like 13 plus an hour let's put it in per what I want to put this into perspective I right now make more per hour than my father ever did in his entire life, God rest his soul. And it's going... And guess what? I am living paycheck to paycheck, and he wasn't. Right, right. Um, if, man, if you were making what we make now in the 70s, dude... Oh, so we'll, we'd hold be on, ballers. It, we'll say 80s. If you made what we made now in the 80s, because 70s had some pretty high inflation... Uh, and some pretty bad. Like, we'd gas be living problems. high on the fucking hog, dude. Dude, we'd be well. We'd be like maybe upper middle class to like what's above. What's above middle class? Upper class. Yeah, we might. We might be upper class, dude. Oh yeah. Um, Fuck yeah. But well, not that, now. see, that's the thing. Back in the eighties, okay. Like I remember when McDonald's was talking about fucking moving the starting pay up to fifteen bucks an hour. Back in the eighties, somebody making fifteen bucks an hour. I mean, they were just. I mean, yeah. it was. It was nuts, and now it ain't shit. No, no, it's not. Um, like it's hard for like a single father. That's or, the definition of inflation, right there. Right, uh, inflation, the gas prices, just everything's so much hotter now. So, so what I'm saying is, it's hard to control how much money you're really bringing in. Like, yeah, you're gonna make the money you're making. You probably ain't gonna be able to make any extra. You could side hustle, and make some stuff. And not, um, a, not all of us had enough foresight to go to medical or law school. Right. And that's being destroyed, too. But um, That's a whole other topic you can You can day. do things to supplement your food. You can do things to supplement your bills that way, i.e., like... Spend smarter. When, we, when, when I take that deer, when we buy a cow... So when you buy a cow, you're paying, like, you know, between, like, 3 and $7 a pound for the entire cow. As opposed to what you would be p going to a grocery store and paying for individual cuts. Right, right. So you're paying the same for ground beef as you're paying for uh, filet. Yeah, but think about it. Like $3 a pound for a cow. At Walmart, uh, how much does a pound of ground beef cost? Over four bucks. Like with tax, damn near five bucks. Right. For, a, for a one pound of ground beef. Right. So already Whoa. right there, that's a 40% savings there. And you're near. talking slop ground. You're talking like 73, 20, whatever. You're talking. Yeah, like, the shit that couldn't be made into good steaks just thrown in the fucking right. grinder. So not, not good meat. We're uh, talking about the 73% fat shit. Right. You could be paying that for. Which trust New York strip and ribeyes and fillets. Yeah, and every fucking cut strap. of meat. I mean, three dollars. I mean, like you go to a fucking good. You go to a good restaurant. That's so good. And uh, for I mean, you get a fillet. I mean, depending on the restaurant you're going, you could be paying anywhere from thirty-five to sixty bucks for that fucking fillet. Right. Um, I, and you're getting it three dollars a pound when you get that fucking cow. Yeah. So cow, uh, deer, uh, hunting, fishing, sa sca savaging. <laughs> Scavenging? Scavenging for I'm the one drinking, you're not, motherfucker. Right. You, you quit I'm just slurring. excited. I'm I know, it's exciting. Um, oh! so, so that stuff can have an impact. Like, if you do su supplement your food that you're not growing a garden, guys. Um, we got some tomato pants going. We got some herbs. <laughs> tomato pants? Tomato pants. Dude, um, the drunker I get, the more you slur your speech. Yeah. So, this is fucking great. Doing some of that stuff will really help, but making a budget and sticking to it that's going to be your bread and butter, guys. Um, Hell yeah! By placing tiny little ads in newspapers all across the country. Oh my god, if you get that reference, leave it in the comments down below, motherfuckers. Yeah. Um, tiny little ads. Yeah. But yeah, making a budget. So who is it for? Everybody right now. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Unless, so Warren Buffett, bro, if you're listening to this podcast, y- you probably don't need it. Um, but everybody else, like everybody else, you need a budget. Uh, I just like just for now at least um until this is over but man so i and i can't i can't say that i'm a budget expert um and i can't say that i've been doing it a long time i i realized the the absolute so i've i've kicked it around for years i've i've known of like the method that i started using now for years um and if i'd done it for years my savings would be so much higher oh yeah and it's not um, How it's 2020. Yeah, so, and I'm going to talk about what is the time. The time is now. Um, but everybody, everybody needs to, you know, and I, I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you how I do my budget. And and I'm and Mike's going to share how he does his savings, how he does that, because he is a master of savings. Um, so I'm going to tell you that. I mean, I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert. This is what I do. This is how it's working. Um Find what works for you and do it, but have a budget. Know what you're spending, guys. Um, so, so the next part, um, who we we pretty much beat that. Like, who should have a budget? Um, if you're listening, you should have a budget. Yeah. Um, the system I used, I didn't invent it. I didn't. It's not revolutionary. It's been around for a long time. Is Dave Ramsey's envelope system. So what you do is, um, like, I sat around one day with my wife and me, and we we wrote down every bill we could think of you know like every every like rent um cell phone bill cell phone bill um internet every single bill we could think of that we spend you know in a month um or yearly and that's in case, gonna be fizzy yeah we thought everything we, we buy um we we kind of like winged how much food we should be buying um i arbitrarily arbitrarily i know food prices pretty well i mean I, I work in the grocery industry. I know what food prices cost, even with inflation. Um, and I, I pick like a budget of three hundred dollars a paycheck, six hundred dollars a month for food to spend. And you know, a lot of this was like we figured out the budget of what we should spend, and then like kind of everything left over. We just like we picked an amount to put in savings, and then when we got to the end, we still had an amount of money that was kind of a like a buffer, and that just went to a secondary savings. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and the budget was built solely on like my average income in, cause I'm not on salary, like due to like overtime here and there, like my paycheck does fluctuate. Um, and anything <laughs> over obviously goes for that, goes for extra savings, but the base for savings or like special things that come up, um, you know, that doesn't necessarily need to come out of savings. Uh, you could leave savings alone and use that extra buffer money. Um, but you figure it out and you, you make an envelope for everything. and. I have a total money that goes in the envelope. Mm-hmm. So like say um, T-Mobile bill, 230 a month. Um, and then I have that divided by paycheck in a lot of cases. So some things are so small like Disney Plus, 875. I don't need to divide that. Right. The bigger bills though, I do. I divide them into like half. So like half of it comes out of this check, half of it goes the other check. Uh, and it has an envelope. And there's, there's things like so and it comes out in cash. You take it out in cash. I leave money in the bank for bills that get paid online. And that's that's like set. Like I know I have to leave this much money in the bank and only enough money to cover those bills. You know, when I first started off, when I first got uh, married, that's how I was doing. I'd leave the money in the bank for the bills. Right. I would round up a little bit and then right, I'd withdraw right. everything else and that's what we'd live on. Yes. And so... One, there's inherently sort of a, there's a greediness kind of that occurs when you have cash. You're like, how many times have you personally thought, man, I don't want to break a 20. No one wants to break a 20. When you break a 20, it's gone. Right. So like you, you sit there mentally thinking like, man, do I really need this? Like I, I'm going to break a 20. I'm going to have to like take my cash and buy this. Like. When it's a debit card, it's goddamn magic land. That's whoop, the thing, whoop, whoop. That, and that's the difference, and that's something I'd actually like to talk to you about. There is a psychological thing that happens when you have that cash. Like he was just saying, when you have the cash in hand, when it's tangible, when you can see exactly how much money that you have, you are a hell of a lot more conscious about what you're going to be spending. 
when you can't see it when it's just numbers when it's on a debit card you have a tendency to overspend absolutely when you have that cash you could see the amount of cash you have dwindling and it will make you a lot more conscious so that's one of my big savings tips right there spend your cash when you get your paycheck now a lot of places have gone to direct deposit withdraw that money yep. anything that yep. you have going in for the bills leave that in there but then have that cash out and my thing i opened a savings account for the first time in my life for an upcoming trip that we're going to be taking and i've got here's another one of my big savings tips now with my bank us bank uh i have it set up on the online bank and i'm sure you can do this with other online banks to when i get paid to automatically withdraw a certain amount from uh from each paycheck i have it scheduled and then put it into that savings account guess what happens to money that you never see you never plan it you like don't plan it right when that money comes right out um uh, it's gone i also like to withdraw out a little bit of money and then hide it it's it's a funny thing i've got money hidden places and because it's out of sight it's out of mind and i forget that money's even there half the time I'll be walking around like going, oh my God, I'm so broke. I'm so broke. Meanwhile, I'm sitting on several hundred dollars that I completely, at that point, forgotten about. But I know in an emergency it's there. And I have had emergencies happen. I've been I, uh, living paycheck to paycheck. And then guess what? My car throws a rod on the interstate and I have to get a new car. Guess what? I had the money set, put back where I went and got a car two days later. Right. Oh, we got a bunch of here. Let me read these out to you. Since Mr. W, let's see, more and more economists are saying this will last through 2025 at least, plan accordingly. Yep, yep. yep. We... Uh, what can we buy today, even at inflated rates, that will allow us to ease the pain of long term depression? Filling my freezer last year cost $45. For the deer and thirty-five dollars for antelope, all budgeted. You know, I've never tried antelope. Uh, yeah, me neither. And oh, have a separate account for bills. Only keep enough for the bill in it for the bills each month, which yeah. is what we've been talking about. Right. Um. And so mine is. Have you ever had antelope? I've not. Um. I've I've had. They say they say lamb is gamier than beef. And I've only ever had deer in jerky form. I've had I've had deer a couple ways. Um, it so I think one way was I had deer steaks, and I think the person murdered them. Like they could have been they could have been cooked better. Um, and then I had deer hamburger helper, and by God, it just tastes like hamburger helper. Uh, and I probably have deer stew. I had I had black bear ribs I cooked one time. They were fantastic. And this uh, interesting, funny little story. There is uh, out in uh, out in. East Tennessee, there is a body farm. Do you know what a body body farm yes. is? Yes. Yeah, they do like uh, they do like uh, forensic experimentation on uh, bodies that are donated to science. Well, they caught on camera because the place is all cameraed up. A fucking deer got onto the property and was eating one of the corpses. For for those of you that don't know, most what we think of as herbivores are opportunistic omnivores. They're not built for hunting, but if there's easy protein, they'll fucking eat it. And they found a deer eating a dead man Ugh. and they and the whole fucking thing got nicknamed menacing oh yeah so yeah so don't feel <laughs> don't feel guilty about eating the deer because they'll eat you no i don't um they will i've seen a video of a fucking horse eating a baby chick yeah no i don't it just guilty. wandered up in front of it it's like i'm not i'm not i'm so on top of what Mike said, taking the money out as cash, if you divide it into the envelopes, like I said, like Dave Ramsey says, um, you have like say an envelope that has like, has your hygiene money. So your toothpaste, your deodorant, that stuff, your soap, you can only spend what's in that envelope. Like, right. like maybe you have to make something stretch a bit longer. You need, maybe you need to find a better deal, um, but you can only spend what you have budgeted in each category. Right, um, and guess what happens if you overspend and you empty out your envelope, but you need more stuff? You're just going to have to suck it up, motherfucker, because that's what the whole point of it is about. Right. Lesson learned. Yeah. Um, you, I think the beer's getting to me. Yeah, I can tell. Antelope is very sage-flavored, makes the best fajitas. Um, antelope fajitas? Man, I don't... Do we have antelope in Tennessee? No. There's I think no, it's I, northern, right? Yeah, no, antelope is... Uh, 
Actually, uh, hey, uh, MW, where uh, where can you find antelope? Where is it uh, normally at? I'm pretty. I'm thinking like northern United States, Canada. Um, see, I was thinking. See, I was thinking out in the Midwest. Maybe Midwest. You'll comment. Um, yeah, I'm waiting. But we're, anyway, um, I think you were confusing antelope with elk. No, no, no. Both, I think. Both. Both, I think. Wonder what moose is like. I don't know, moosey. I don't know. I don't want to be the motherfucker that tries to go after it. Twelve hundred pounds of fucking pure rage, especially during rutting season. And I'll, I'll go after one. I don't You'd care. go after a moose yeah. with the with the right gun. Like I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna under. So I, I'm gonna have to get me a. You a, go after a new it with a bow. Um, my stepdad left. Like he has some hunting rifles. Like so in the state of legally it is you can hunt with an AR-15, which is the highest caliber rifle that I have. You can or can't. You can. You can hunt with an AR-15. There are some limitations on it. And they do make loads that are better for hunting, but I'm not. Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, Dakotas. Yeah. So up north and the Midwest. Yeah. Not, so we were both right. Yeah, not near us. We can't get antelope. No, yeah. Um, no, there's no antelope in Tennessee. No, but there are. There, I mean, but out where we live, deer are like cockroaches. Yeah. I mean, they're fucking everywhere. It's not uncommon for us to come out and see deer across the street from our house. Yeah, and I see deer at least once a week. I see deer and wild turkey like once uh, oh my god, day. there's that one house that I pass on the way to work that looks so picturesque. Right. I call it a hunter's wet dream because they have horses. But out in their horse pasture at any given time. One morning I drove past and I saw eight deer and at least 15 wild turkey just grazing in their front yard. And I'm like, jeebus, cripes. I mean, yeah. That I mean, that's why I call it a hunter's wet dream. I'm like, you have a feast right there. Right. Excuse me. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to get deer this year. Like for, yeah, 45, 60 bucks, whatever the processing is in your area, you, you can get like quite a bit of meat. I've never eaten anything that I've seen moving. That's my problem. Don't think of me as a wimp. I just have to, I'm not a vegetarian. I love meat. I've never actually gone out and shot something and ate it though. If you, so if you want Captain Taylor Mike to come to the woods with me and go hunting this year, drop a comment. I'm know. going to go. That's yeah. the thing. I've already decided I'm going to go. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure if I could take that shot. But I'm going to be right there next to you. Yeah. I'm not going to be sitting up in the deer stand going, run, deer, run. No. Yeah. Um, maybe we can lowball in and take a squirrel in August. August is squirrel season, I think, in Tennessee. But squirrels are the master race. Nah, we'll take a squirrel. Um, so, so budgets. Uh, there's my sweet daughter and my sweet wife. What are you doing, sweet girl? Going going home, going leaping day? Oh, she's upset. Anyway, moose good flavor, very lean, and they have been populating elk back east. Oh, okay. Um so yeah, that um how to budget uh, we've pretty much talked about it. Mike, you you do you have anything else you want to say about savings? Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. Uh, as far as savings goes, I actually have said everything I want to about savings. But I would like to talk a little bit about your food budget. Uh, now, one thing that uh, me and my wife have done, and uh, it, I mean, it also depends on your area. It depends on the quality. But uh, I have done all of my grocery shopping for the week before at a Dollar Tree. Yeah. You, uh, yeah, you just got to know how to put stuff together. I'm like, I'm going to be making an amazing goulash later that cost me less than five bucks on the ingredients. Yeah. And, and so I think I have a couple thoughts like um, me. So I've I work in a grocery store. I have access to get stuff. Um, I generally buy it because uh, I live in a tiny house. I don't have a lot of space. I generally buy it like daily. Um, and I think that was leading some overspending. We've been going like mass shopping for the majority of things that we need, not counting like don't shop hungry. Well, That's I, a great tip. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people forget don't yeah. shop hungry. Yeah, we're um, eat then go shopping. We've been doing like shopping, so that way you get the stuff that you need instead of everything that you want at that moment. Right. Well, we 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 stick to the list pretty good, um, with a couple things extra like, uh, but the budget has room for you know like. Oh, we should probably get this, or the kids could use this. Um, oh, and I cannot express this enough. Canned goods. Canned goods last a very fucking long time. If you're a prepper, you already know this. 
but canned goods are usually cheaper. Yeah. They will last sometimes decades, if not longer. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just a great, and you don't require any kind of refrigeration, so automatically you're saving budgeting on electricity right there. You're saving budgeting on food. And you got to remember the thing about survival. There's a difference between living and surviving. And we're about surviving here. What's going to keep you alive until you can get to that comfortable place? Budgeting survival, I can't re I can't suggest canned goods enough. Right. Or canning your own, which um, that that's something. That's, that's even better. I mean, that's even better. If you can can and jar your own stuff, more power to you. Yeah. Uh, so a little a, a good investment up front will save you a lot of money down the road. Uh, there, there is a good chance I may try processing the deer myself. Um, I've never done that, so I don't have the skill set. But I have watched a lot of videos. Um, I've, so I need to put a link in here. I highly, highly recommend the Bearded Butcher Brothers on YouTube. Their videos are so entertaining. Um, and they have, like, they have several videos on deer processing, which is, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen a couple of them a couple times now. Um, uh, and other stuff too. Like I've seen him break down a cow, which is since I since I do sell meat, uh, having a lot of that butchering knowledge from watching those videos like helps out. Like now I know the difference between skirt and flank steak. Skirt is basically this part of your stomach here. Um, flank comes off of like your one of your hindquarters, uh, the the bottom, like the leg. I think the leg has flank steak and not the shoulder. Maybe maybe the other way around. Uh, it's definitely a limb. Um, so that's the difference and obviously you would think that what would be tougher would be a limb as opposed to a stomach muscle Yeah, because it's all muscle, right? Well, it's all muscle all all meat is muscle Not all meat part of its fat. I mean Yes, but all meat is muscle It that's just so contains varying degrees of fat. right? Um, so yeah, and, and the more like the more overused the muscle is the tougher it'll be if you, you have never a hear of anybody muscle, eating deer legs what part of the legs? Any part of the legs. I've never heard of anybody eating any part of the deer leg. You don't. Yes. The, there's several roasts, and you can make awesome buco. You don't. You I'm don't. not talking about the fucking like up. To, I'm not talking about the hind quarters and the ass and all that shit. I'm talking about the legs. So like, from, there's a certain part. Let's from say the from the down knee down. down. From the knee down, you can make like bone broth and stuff. Oh yeah, bone um, broth down to like the hoof. Like, Cause it's all bone and skin. It's at all that bone. Point. Yeah, there's not like a lot of there's. So there's a dish called asabuco. You can cut it up and make that. Like, it's a it's a soup kind of thing, like a slow braised soup. Uh, it's good for that. Um, but yeah, and a lot of your best deer jerky is gonna come from like the rump, the rump muscles and stuff, the leg, like the bottom round of a deer. You, you know what's jerky. funny? How much the ass of an animal gets eaten? Actually, what have we got here? Process your own, save the money, one-time investment in gear, last a life too. I already covered that. Yeah. And stews, casseroles, and other depression era meals are budget friendly. Simple ingredients that can be frozen and canned for later. You know, Absolutely. another here's another budget tip that I will request. YouTube. YouTube's got videos for everything, and all you right. gotta do is like budget survival, budget meals. Right. There is one channel that I love to watch. And it is a channel simply titled, it's, an, it's titled after the name of the chick that runs it, Julia Pacheco, P-A-C-H-E-C-K-O, if I'm not mistaken. Duh. And she recently put out a video like five meals for five dollars or less, which is actually where I got the goulash yeah. recipe. No, she has a lot of great videos. She's sometimes sponsored by Walmart. Walmart is, gr and I hate to toot Walmart's horn, I really fucking do, but they have a lot of really low prices. Now, they do that by periodically taking their employees into the back and flogging them, but they've got a lot of really low prices that are really great. Uh, so, no, check her channel out. And there's all sorts of budget meals. Like I said, I've done all my grocery shopping for the week for me and my wife at the damn Dollar Tree. And if you know how to do this correctly, you can get a week's worth of meals for like a family of four and spend less than 50 bucks. Yeah. And for a lot of people, like maybe you want to look at your portion size and cut back. Like Absolutely. The American portion can it is sometimes two to three times larger than like a european yeah. portion and guess what europe's a hell of a lot older than we are yeah I'm, but we're I'm, a hell of a lot fatter than they are i'm coming up on july is 11 months that i've been dieting so last 
August, I weighed 294. This July, I weigh 203. You weighed 294? You were almost to 300? Yeah. I was over 300. Yeah. So he's lost more weight than I have, but we, I mean, I'm down in the 240s and he is damn near to the big one zero. And he's damn near Wonderland. Down, he's damn near into Wonderland or right. Niederland, as I like to call it. He's damn near under 200 pounds. And I am so. And I try of course, to do this things. motherfucker has an obsessive personality. When he goes into something, he goes, he goes further than a whole hog into it. He goes the whole herd of hogs into it. All right. He, I mean, he doesn't, okay. When he was, when he was drinking, he drank all the alcohol. I mean, he cleared out the entire fucking state of Oklahoma of every kind of alcohol that it was. And that was on a Tuesday. All right. And since he's become non-alcoholic, he is as non-alcoholic as he was alcoholic. He obsesses, okay? It is fucking awesome. He goes whole hog and anything, so it's no wonder that he has fucking got damn near down to 100 a hell of a lot faster than I am, which scares me about this competition of us racing to 1,000. Because if he gets it in his mind, he goes there. So listen to this motherfucker. So, so I tried a couple of different things during this past year, um, and just calorie counting, old school calorie counting, and portion control got me like 90% of the way there. Same um, here. I've swapped to, to keto again recently. I tried keto before. There's, there's, I'm doing a stricter, more keto keto now. Him and his wife, me and my wife, when we all went on the calorie counting and everything, I think between the four of us, we lost over 200 pounds. Probably. Yeah, we lost a whole adult human. Right, and and so it, once, you, once you do, so, me and my wife, we weighed and measured stuff. We calorie counted. We portion controlled. Like what people think is a portion is severely not a portion usually. Like, um, man, keep this in mind. In Europe, they don't they don't do doggy bags, okay? Because the portion you're served is what you eat there, and you're full. You don't have another meal to take home with you. Right. That's a whole American thing. Americans have this whole thing about what a portion is. Oh, this portion is huge. It's because it's actually four portions. Right, right. So w once you, you do that long enough and like, I don't strictly weigh and measure as much now, but that's because I've been weighing and measuring for like almost a year. I know what a portion is supposed to look like. Realistically, what most people eat as one meal is a whole day's worth of food right. in, in this country. So if you just want to have a fun experiment, get the, get the app MyFitnessPal Eat like you always eat and just, just track, weigh, measure, input, everything. And then cry when you look at the results. Right. Like there's there's times that I've seen meals just be like over a thousand calories for a meal. Uh, and when I did the math, like take, I, I should be eating around maybe 2,300 calories a day to maintain my weight. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? On average, before I started this diet, my average fucking uh, meal would some be sometimes around 2,000 calories. No, no, yeah. No, no, my, what I should be eating to maintain weight is 2,300. And that's what for I one was meal. eating was about 4,500 calories a day. Oh my God, dude. My fucking biggest, I was packing away 67,000 calories a day. Right. Um, so you're, so one, health wise, eating less calories is better. Two, since your I, budget's happier. Hell yeah. Since I lost this weight, I've got more energy. I'm an asthmatic and now I can breathe better. Yeah. So that's another, like, we're probably going to do another episode on weight loss, and we've gone a little bit on it. But um, just, so with inflation, if you reduce the amount that you eat to a correct, average, like, accurate portion, you're better. I mean, hold on, hold on. Have you ever seen pictures of the beaches back in the 70s? The beaches? Yes. No, it's not the kind of thing I look up. I can tell you there was not a lot of obese people back in the 70s. They were there. It wasn't a lot. Like, everyone looked really fit and healthy because um, inflation was hard. Uh, you, like, and we've really made this situation for ourselves. Like, like the times were so good. We made people so weak um, that, man, to be honest, like, it's going to be hard, and I'm not looking forward to it, and it's going to suck, and it sucks that I have a two-year-old you know, but hard times make good people. 
No, unfortunately, uh, your little one, uh, she was born probably at the beginning of one of those. She was born at the tail end of 2019, uh, right when to the kick good, off the... The good the, times were... See, at 2019, all the years leading up to that, people in this country and people in the world, but especially in America, had gotten so fucking spoiled that they were just bitching about everything. Remember 2015, the year that everybody was absolutely offended by everything right. possible? Right, and it's only gotten worse. And it just got worse and worse and worse until fucking, guess what? March of 2020. What happened in March of 2020? That's when COVID became an international sensation. Yeah. yeah. And guess what? I mean, it's the beginning of the hard times. We are... You have to look at this responsibly, people. This could be, I mean, we're, I mean, the Great Recession, the Great Depression. We go through these periods throughout human civilization and throughout human history. We go through great times and then we go through hard times. And guess what? We're at the, one of the hard times portions. We don't know how long this is going to go on. I mean, their economic experts are saying 2025, like W just said. I think that's a lowball estimate. That, I mean, it very well could be. You don't no, that's what surviving and prepping is all about because you fucking don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Prepare for everything. Be the proverbial boy scout. You have to be prepared. And the best way to be prepared is to make sure you get the most bang for your fucking buck. Yes. Um, I think that's about to wrap it up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, make your budget, stick by it, get what you can to supplement it. Did anything else? Um, leave us a rating review on iTunes or somewhere else and you can get a sticker. Uh, if you email me and tell me you left a rating and review with your address, I will send you a free sticker. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to youtube.com slash couch potato yeah. mic. I'd, I'd consider giving like a sticker to every YouTube subscriber, but I want like 500 or so right now. And I don't want, I don't have 500 stickers. Um, but if I get getting that many, maybe I do. I don't know. Um, but yeah, do do consider like uh, helping us get to the road to 1K, survival punk, catch to the mic. And with that, I think we're about to wrap it up. Do um, you have any more questions? Let's see. This will be right, easy. it'll be easiest for for my daughter. She won't know any better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, she, she'll be like uh, she'll be like Judith Grimes on uh, on freaking uh, The Walking Dead. She was just born into the zombie apocalypse. Right. right. And I mean, like I said. So the times are going to be hard, but they're, it's, it, guys, it's not the shit hitting the fan. This is not a nuclear apocalypse. Um, yeah, it's it, not. It's not, it, it's going to be rough, but. It's hard. It's not insurpassable. People survived the Great Depression. Yeah. Um, we have, we're still here because we've survived every fucking thing that life could have possibly thrown at us and our ancestors. And we just kept on. The human spirit is unkillable. Yes. Yes, uh, man. Jack Spirico has the ant for like his like little play like mascot occasionally. Like he's got his logo, but he's got like the ant is a mascot because you know the ant grasshopper story. Um, maybe <coughs> this is a Bible punk cockroaches. We're gonna be here no matter what. Maybe Hell that yeah. needs to be a shirt. Ah, uh, but yeah. And so yeah, no, I'm I'm planning on getting some podcast guests on soon. Uh, plan on being a guest on the podcast. Um, I, I'm, I had to. I don't have COVID, guys. It's just sinus drainage. Yeah, I had to turn down. A, For what? Uh, I had to turn down a. For what? An appearance, like a go, a go, be at a seminar, be a speaker. Oh. Because I'm going to be out of town at that point. So that's awesome. But I'll definitely. Yeah, we would have. I would have gone with them whether they wanted me to or not. But the timing just did not line up well. Right. Um, but, <sighs> but with that, we're gonna wrap it up, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for stopping by. This is James from And this D-I- is Couch Potato. You don't fucking step on my outro. Ah. And this is Couch Potato Mike. DIY to survive, you guys. You guys. <sighs> Oh, God. Unfortunately, we're still live streaming until he gets his ass up and turns this off, which should happen in three, two, one. You want to stop streaming? Yeah.